depth that the fish are in or should be in, that's all kind of a, it's all kind of a uh, time of the year type deal. You know, like obviously if we're in the springtime, you think the fish are going to be spawning, you're not going to be looking for them in eight or ten feet of water. Now, unless you're smallmouth fishing, like when Joe was up here talking to you, I've seen smallmouth spawn in 15 feet of water. But most of the time we're talking about these thick grass beds, you know, those fish are going to spawn in four to five feet of water. Um, but in the summertime, they might be in four to five feet of water if the grass is really thick and, you know, and the water looks good and you see a lot of brim and bluegill around. But typically in the summertime, they're going to be out a little bit more towards the edges. Um, so that's just what you want to just kind of use your head and kind of figure out where you think the fish should be. Um, the thickness and thinness of the grass is also kind of going into where you think they should be too in the time of the year because in, in the, the spawn time of the year, just like we were talking about, say, you know, that we think they're going to be in four or five feet of water, but I wouldn't go in four or five feet of water and go to the thickest grass I could possibly find because they need light to penetrate to their nests so, so the eggs will, will, uh, will hatch. Well, therefore, so this is how we're, we're kind of putting the pieces of this puzzle together. So we know we want to be in four or five feet of water. <coughs> Let's find some thinner areas in the grass so we can get some light to get the eggs hatched. We're putting it all together so we got clear water. We got a little bit thinner areas in the grass. We got about the right depth. That's how we're putting things together. And you know, and of course, in summertime, it's going to be a little bit different. But I'm just I'm, I'm using this as an, as an example so we can all be on the same page here. Um, go ahead and go one more on there for me. Now, locating the productive areas. Scroll it down just just a hair. Locating the productive areas. Now, go back down, please. Down. There you go. Okay. So. When we're locating the productive areas in there, um, points, pockets, holes, ambush points, it all, it all goes to the, the same kind of thing as we're building where we think the fish should be. We got it in the, we're, like, like I said, we're going in a, in a spawning type deal. Any place where there's little open holes and stuff in there, obviously that's where the fish are going to try to spawn. But not every fish is going to be doing the same thing at the same time. So you need to take into consideration, yeah, you know, we're looking at these holes and everything, but if there's some hard edges around those holes, that's some place that you want to concentrate on too because just because there's some fish on the beds doesn't mean that, that every fish is going to be on a bed. So as you're working through those areas, you want to you check on the sides, just everywhere around where you think, once again, we're going back to where we think they should be, where you think they are, check around the sides too, and there's really no way to tell exactly, in my opinion, once again, everything's most of the time and maybe, but in my opinion, there's no way to really tell exactly what stage the majority of the fish are in. Because if you go in there and you see a couple on the beds, yeah, you see some on the beds, so people want to automatically think that every fish in the, you know, in the lake is spawning. That's not necessarily true. I've seen fish on Okeechobee and you know, other places, you know, up north where they're seen fish on the beds, you know, for two months. Not the same fish now, but just, you know, over the course of time. Now, there's always one stretch when a lot of them do it. But over the course of time, you know, I've seen fish spawn sh shallow, deep on the same lake from April to, you know, the end of May. So you never know. But my point is, you never know what all the fish are doing at the same time. So you have to really cover all the areas where you think they should be. And as the fish move along, go ahead and scroll one more. As the fish move along and move, move around and move out through the grass beds, they'll set up in different areas. And the best way that I've found to find these fish, and this, this is a really important deal. This is a pretty good picture to kind of illustrate what's going on, and I can give you a perfect example. Has anybody fished the Potomac River very much? Anybody familiar with the Potomac at all? It's really, really giant shallow bays and really, really thick grass. Then there'll be some thin grass, there'll be some, but there's, there's basic areas on the Potomac River where everybody knows there's big schools of bass live. Chickamauxon, 
um, Madden Woman Creek. There's a lot of different places that there's always a giant school of bass that live there. Once again, how you find them, here's exactly what I do. I'll go in an area this big and I know it, it takes a little fortitude, but I'll know that I'm going to go in here and I'm going to spend however many hours it takes me and I'm going to kind of grid this whole area. I'm going to fish all the way along through here and come up and then fish back, right back across down through here and come up and fish right back across down through here. And every single time I get a bite, I'm going to hit a waypoint on my GPS. Every single time, if I catch one, if I get a bite, if I miss one, if I see a blow up, anything that happens, I'm going to do that. And then I might even, if, if I was far enough apart and as I came up and down through here, I might even come up and go like this with it too. And the information Bass University provides isn't your basic run-of-the-mill fishing video. This is specific information from A to Z to help you learn, get to the water, and become a better angler quickly.